Okay, we've added something really uh, quite powerful to Lyric, and that's the ability to actually tie scripts or macros to uh, template fields, so text fields. So I made up this graphic for stock prices, uh, and I want to put these six stocks in here. And I want to retrieve uh, the current price, um, the volume, today's volume, and then the change amount. But this is very easy to do to set up, you know, whether it's a Google Doc or an Excel spreadsheet or even to get some data from a data source to do this. But how do we then uh, tell the correct arrow to go into place? All right, so this is what we've done. So I've just made a very simple, again, uh, one. And if you come along to where the stock price is right here, or the change, okay, Basically, what I want to do is I wanted to uh, associate a script that looks at this number in here, and if this is a negative number, put in uh, the down arrow. And if it's a positive number, put in the green arrow up. So if you go to this text template field and right-click and go down, way down to the bottom, and click on Internal Properties, you can see that we've added a thing called Preprocess Data Script. Um, so again, we write the script, and I'll show you what the script looks like. And so just on this text field, when we read this page up, it actually performs that macro on this, um, this value right in here and decides on what to do. Okay, so I've put this same script into each one of these templates down here. All right, so let me go and I'll show you what the macro looks like. Okay, so this is um, th this is the macro or the script that we're associating it to. And so basically, it's doing a pre-processed data of the current value of that template field. And basically, what I'm doing is saying, okay, up equals, and this is the path where the up arrow is. Down, this is the path where the down arrow is. And I'm not going to be uh, pretend that I'm a, a macro writer. But again, this macro is available, and if you know VB scripting macro language, we do give you some um, some of these to, to play with, and then you can update. So basically, it's looking at, um, you know, again, I know that this, when you put a little quote arrow on there, these two lines and these two lines here are really not part of the macro. They're just uh, some information. And it's basically looking at uh, the arrow um, numbers and the change numbers. So... We're looking at that and basically we're saying if, uh, if that value is a negative, it's got a negative, then we use the arrow file name down, which is what we did right here. Uh, or else, if the arrow, if it's not a negative, it's got to be a positive, and then we use the file arrow up. All right, so again, we've associated this with this. Now, where do I get this stock from? Well, I guess we can get it from a various items, various sources, various data sources. Uh, you know, if you have your data source, that's fine. Again, that data source does not have to have this information in here. That's the cool thing about this. It actually just has to have this negative or positive number in here. Okay, so... Uh, and a few tutorials ago, I showed how we can connect to a, a Google Doc or a Google Spreadsheet. So I'm just going to open this up. Now I'm, again, I'm using Google Sheets for this. So I put in the company name. I've just typed in those names. Uh, the closing price, the up, down, the, the open price, and the volume. So you can see in this sheet, there's no place that I put where, what the arrow is. Now, the cool thing about this is um, Google actually has finance available. So if you search out Google, Google Finance, you can actually put in these totals and this Google Sheet will update according to whatever you have in here. So I basically, um, you know, in this, in this field right here, I said equals Google Finance and put G-O-O-G, -O -O -G, which is Google's uh, a code. And same thing for Facebook, Netflix, IBM, blah, 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 so forth. And this one, I did a formula. It actually didn't have this in the Google Finance. It had the closing price, the open price, and the volume. It actually has a bunch of other uh, values as well. It just did not have what the current up or down price is. So what I did is I said, okay, well, it has the open price, which it opened today. And it had the closing price from yesterday. So I just did a formula. 
in this one here, I just basically said D2 minus B2, whatever that value is, put it in here. And then I did the volume. So again, Google Finance, Google, comma, volume. And that put that total in there. So that's basically what I did. This thing is uh, updating live. Um, it's probably got some time delay on it because we can't get it perfectly uh, to the second. Um, but it is updating. All right, so let's just close that down. And then I went to the data object. Right click on here and I'll just show you how I connected to it. And again, if I went back, I would have hit Google like this, picked up the spreadsheet like we did in the previous, uh, the previous one. Okay, so we'll just open this up again. Now, in the previous one, I actually bound it using the columns. And that was the sports lower third. This one is, a, if I click on cell, you can do it other way. It's very easy. But you can see when it's in a cell, it's easy. I, I'm dragging and dropping. Okay, so if I just open this up, you can see where it says stock change. All I did over here is I dragged this and put it over here. Okay, so just drag it and drop it in place. Okay, so if it was the open price, I would just drag it and drop it there. Now you can tell which one is there. You can again go like this and you can see stock change price. That's not right. I want it under here. And so this stock change price is the one that I created the formula for. So that's basically done. And then I went in again to this field here, right clicked internal properties and I just copied the path of where that text document or that script was. So that's it. Now when I read page 50, you can see that the numbers already changed. So let's just put uh, this on and put it to the output. Now if I left it here long enough, you'd see what changed. It, 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 it changes. I, I did some timing on it. It changes approximately every two minutes. Technically, I have it linked to change every second, but if the value hasn't changed, obviously you're not going to see the change there. But about every two minutes, this will change. So this is all updated information. So if we left this on the air long enough and this, this value actually went above zero, this number would automatically change to a green arrow. Now I wanted to show you one more thing in here. You notice that the volume comes in and it's just straight numbers. It doesn't have any commas or anything. Uh, again, as before, I went into the data object properties and clicked on the format column. And I said, this is going to be a number. And I said, use thousands as a separator. If you want this to be a number, only two decimal places because when I initially did it, I was getting you know, 540.3167. Maybe you only want to see two decimal points, so two decimal places. So I clicked on two decimal places there, so it, it will only ever show me two decimal places. So again, this is uh, how we do some pre-processing of uh, a data script in uh, a scene that is live on the output.